Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. We will begin per usual with our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you and I ask that you forgive my sins so that you may hear this prayer. We come humble before you, Lord, grateful that you have received us in your lap, in your hand of love and grace. We are nobody. We are dust. We don't know what we did or what you saw in us, but we simply glorify you and give you all our praise because we now have a dwelling place under the Most High because you led us to abide under your shadow. Father, we pray that today you keep us all under that divine refuge, under the wings of your love and that you guide our footsteps for we cannot do anything properly, justly, wisely without your direction. May your angels charge over us so that you keep us all in our ways. You are the guide for our spiritual, for our material, for our physical, emotional, mental journeys, for our well-being. And we don't want to take a single step without calling on you, Lord, without coming to you first. Keep us from being consumed by our own desires, our own thoughts and actions, and thinking that we have dominion over our lives. Keep us from being consumed by arrogance and sin, and let your light make way for correction, for acceptance and submission. Teach us to number our days that we may gain hearts of wisdom, as your word tells us, Father, that we make proper and good use of our time, of our resources, all for preparation of our souls to receive our eternal salvation. Stay near, Father, and I pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our devotional for today is titled, Yoga for Christians, written by V. Novoa, translated by Maria Elena Cardona, and taken from the book Mesa de Fe. Our biblical base is found in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. So says the word of God, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. Amen. May we be blessed through the reading of God's word. Yoga for Christians? Yoga means yoke. Yoga originated in ancient India, and some claim that it was born in the era of the Vedas, the oldest scriptures of India from 1500 years before Christ. Yoga invites you to control the mind through physical, mental, and spiritual exercises until you are in union with the Supreme, which means being yoked with a spiritual power. Many, including Christians, practice yoga, believing that they are only doing stretching and breathing exercises to improve their physical health and control stress without realizing that the occult hides behind yoga. Many of the positions are an invocation to one of the 330 million deities of an idolatrous religion. Yoga falsely promises peace and an encounter with God but not the true God, a guide to a path where it is not necessary to recognize that we are sinners, repent, and admit our need for a Redeemer to find peace and be saved. By our own efforts, exercises, meditation, etc., we will never reach the presence of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Outside of Him, there is no way 
to the living God, peace, freedom from guilt, and happiness are not achieved. Be warned, all who came before me are thieves and robbers, says Jesus. Danger, dear reader, do not play with the salvation of your soul. What communion has light with darkness? And what agreement between the temple of God and the idols? Heed God's counsel and his promise. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. 1 John 5.21 Amen. I won't add much to this impeccably written summary on the subject and praise the Lord because it is not us, but the Holy Spirit using his instruments to give us these pieces of text and bring us exactly what we need to hear, listen, remember, and understand. All glory to our Father. But my dear friends, the sin is in him who knows to do good and does not do it. If we in an occasion participated in something like this and we weren't aware of the meaning behind or if we were in some doubt about it, now it's been confirmed. At the moment, God lets it pass because like I said, we're not aware of it entirely. But once we are, we must take that into consideration and stop ourselves from continuing anything such as that. Things and practices like yoga that seem harmless, that are advertised as healthy and good for you, can actually be stealthy and murky methods the enemy uses to deviate us from our faith. As I was reading the article, I thought, wow, everything leads to an exhaustive opposition to what we believe, to the doctrine of Christ. And indeed, unfortunately, there are many Christians who partake in these exercises because it's quote-unquote healthy, because it's the trend. My brothers and sisters, that's why it's so important for us to do our research, but above all, to bring it before the Lord and ask Him and His Holy Spirit to give us the insight and the perceptiveness so that we can see right from wrong. Today, like I said, it's been confirmed. And may the Lord have mercy and help us seek him solely, that he moves us when something just doesn't feel right. When you're in the middle of somewhere or something and the Holy Spirit gives us that itch of discomfort and that we be wise not to ignore it, not to brush it off and say, oh, it's nothing, even if it seems innocuous or inoffensive or not a big deal. No, my dear friends, anything that is against God and his holiness and his word, his law, his way is a big deal. So in the big or the small, let us always choose to seek his wisdom, my brothers and sisters. May we seek the approval from him so that we may live solely in the light and the clarity of our Heavenly Father. Amen. May God receive all the honor and the glory, and I pray that you were blessed through this devotional. But before we end this session, I kindly invite you to visit our YouTube channel, SEC English Ministry, for our daily Bible reading. And now we ask that the blessed love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the companion and communion of the Holy Spirit, our great counselor, be with all of his children now and forever. Amen. This was your sister, Gaily Castaneda, praying that you have a happy Friday.